Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for joining us here on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio. We go now to a news conference that's beginning with Austin and Travis County leaders. They are discussing a surge in deadly overdoses that happened on Monday here in Austin. Let's listen in as it appears Travis County Judge Andy Brown is kicking things off. Good afternoon, I'm Travis County Judge Andy Brown. Thanks for joining us here today. Um, first, I wanna offer my deepest condolences during this difficult time to the family, families and friends of the people who died yesterday. This tragic loss of life weighs heavily on our community and our hearts go out to all of those who are impacted. I'd like to recognize and thank Austin Travis County EMS and the Austin Police Department for their swift response to the largest opioid overdose outbreak we've seen in years here in Austin and Travis County. Their quick response saved dozens of lives and their swift distribution and administration of Narcan prevented further loss. Later this afternoon, the Travis County Commissioner's Court will approve a contract with Texans Connecting Overdose Prevention Efforts, also known as Texcope. The partnership with Texcope will provide Travis County with real-time data on overdose incidents and Narcan distribution and supply. Access to this data will allow Travis County, our community partners, and our first responders to have real-time information about when, where, and why overdoses are occurring and use the information to tailor our opioid response and remediation efforts. Thanks to Texcope, we were able to quickly alert overdose response organizations across the I-35 corridor from San Antonio to Dallas to be prepared to respond in case the bad bats traveled to their location. We've also confirmed that Integral Care has Narcan available at all of their clinic locations and is actively distributing through their community outreach teams. Opioid overdose deaths are completely preventable and everyone in Travis County should be aware and prepared to respond to an overdose incident. Everyone should carry Narcan and know how to respond to an overdose. I carry a dose of it in my computer bag. Drug overdose deaths continue to be the number one cause of non-accidental deaths in Travis County. On, in, back in 2022, on May 24th of 2022, the Commissioner's Court declared our overdose epidemic a public health crisis and made significant policy and financial investments to save lives. This funded a three-part strategy of education, prevention, and intervention to reduce the number of overdose deaths and support harm reduction activities and strategies. Since our declaration for fiscal year 2022 and 23, the county has distributed 9,752 doses of Narcan and trained about 320 people. I know the city and other entities have done more on top of that. This year, the commissioner's court authorized another $175,000 to purchase and distribute Narcan to community-based organizations who are on the ground tackling this crisis. We distribute it to places like Communities for Recovery, NICE Project, The Other Ones Foundation, Safe Alliance, Safe Haven, Sunrise Homeless Navigation Center, Sunrise Community Church, Texas Harm Reduction Alliance, Trinity Center, Austin, Urban Alchemy, uh, Vivant Health, Working Group 512, and Travis County Departments. In total, that is 14,256 doses of Narcan. Um, we've received opioid settlement funds from those lawsuits. So far, we've received $1.5 million or so, and we've authorized about 860,000 of that to be invested in contracts for methadone treatment services, peer recovery supports, the purchase of Narcan, and the rental of Sharps collection kiosks. We clearly ha still have a lot of work to do to make sure that our community has better access to Narcan and to increase access to overdose prevention programs. Substance use addiction and the recreational use of drugs should not be a death sentence. So if you're struggling with an addiction to drugs, ask for help. Nobody is looking down on you for asking for help. Asking for help could save your life. And to learn more about how to respond to an overdose and where to get free Narcan, you can go to txcope.org, texcope.org. So um, thank you all very much for being here today. We're going to learn more from the folks who actually did the response. And right now I'm going to pass it over to Austin Mayor Pro Tem Leslie Poole.
Thanks, Judge. I'm Leslie Poole, Mayor Pro Tem of the Austin City Council, and I thank you all for joining us here today. This is a vitally important topic, and we need your help to get critical, life-saving information to everyone in our community. Mayor Watson wanted to be here, but he's out of town, so I'll do my best to fill in for him. The loss of life since yesterday morning is devastating to contemplate. We know that drug use is dangerous, but with, with so many now being laced with synthetic opioids like fentanyl, the odds of it being deadly have dramatically increased in the past few years. I want to thank our emergency responders for their excellent work yesterday. Their quick reaction and expertise saved many lives. They also canvassed areas handing out Narcan kits, which can be life-saving for those who have overdosed. It's a good idea, as the county judge has mentioned, for anyone who has a, fa a friend or a family member who struggles with drug addiction to have Narcan nearby and be prepared to use it. I also want to thank members of the Austin Police Department who are actively investigating the source of these overdoses and bringing those responsible for dealing these deadly drugs to justice. And now I'll invite Austin Travis County EMS Assistant Chief Steve White to share some information with you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, yesterday around 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, the city experienced a certain surge in, surge in opiate overdoses initially concentrated in the downtown area and then eventually spreading throughout the city, north, south, and east. Austin Travis County EMS and our valued partners at the Homeless Strategy Office and Urban Alchemy rapidly deployed a team to these affected areas and quickly started distributing Narcan rescue kits and educating bystanders on how to use them in case they encountered an overdose. Throughout the day, yesterday, and in today, we have seen an unexpected volume of opioid overdoses across the city. And as of noon today, Austin Travis County EMS has responded to over 51 suspected overdoses. Many of those were found in cardiac arrest. And unfortunately, out of those 51, four resulted in uh, being pronounced deceased. We have not experienced overdoses of this volume since 2015 when K2 was effect, uh, struck our community. We typically average about two to three overdose calls per day. Yesterday, we were in the 50s. That is well over a 1,000% increase. The safety and well-being of our residents are our top priorities, and we are working diligently to address this crisis. Many of the people that you see standing with me today have put in long hours to develop programs for times just like this. If our city and county leadership had not made this a priority, the outcome of yesterday would have been much, much worse. The number of lives that we would have lost would have been dozens instead of single digits. Our community health paramedics have distributed over 267 doses of Narcan in some of these affected areas. Community members can help us by learning the signs of an overdose and how to care for someone until help arrives. We would like to acknowledge some of the outstanding efforts of our public safety partners in the Austin Police Department and the Austin Fire Department who are working this surge with us. Chief, I would like to point out Henry Sector specifically uh, performed uh, amazing work and actually went through their entire stock of Narcan in one day. Additionally, we encourage anyone who may be struggling with substance abuse to seek help and support from local resources that are available in our community. You should never use an unknown substance, but if you choose to, we encourage you to start slow Start low and never use alone. You should always have a sober friend who has Narcan available so that they can administer and call 911. 
I would now like to turn the podium over to uh, Austin Police Department Assistant Chief Eric Fitzgerald. Thank you, Chief White. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Eric Fitzgerald, Assistant Chief with the Austin Police Department. I want to start out by thanking our patrol officers and our organized crime division detectives, as well as our public safety partners, Austin Travis County EMS and Austin Fire Department. Their combined efforts undoubtedly reduced the number of deaths that we have experienced and seen over the last 30 hours. During this period of time, a number of our officers administered multiple doses at various scenes, which helped save the lives prior to our public safety partners arriving on scene. Additionally, we've seen civilians jump into action and intervene by administering Narcan on some of these scenes. Since October of 2021, the Austin Police Department is fortunate enough to be trained and to have our officers administer Narcan in situations just like this. And as you can see, this has made a significant impact. At this time, it is apparent that there is a deadly batch of illicit narcotics in our community. Our intent at the Austin Police Department is to find those persons responsible and hold them accountable. Again, I want to thank all of the officers for their quick response and tremendous work in addressing this immediate threat to our community and public safety. Now, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Pat Eastlick. He is with our Organized Crime Division Narcotics Support Unit. He is going to go into the update on where the investigation is at this point. Uh, I want to remind everyone that this is an active, ongoing investigation. Uh, there are some details that we need to withhold to ensure the integrity of the investigation. Good afternoon. Detectives yesterday were notified by officers from the downtown area command um, concerning an increase of overdoses within a short period of time. Detectives from the narcotic support unit responded downtown to investigate the source of these narcotics. During the course of their investigation, two individuals were detained and one resulting in a arrest for felon in possession of a firearm. Further investigation is needed for additional charges on these individuals. The APD Narcotics Support Unit is investigating the source of the illicit narcotics and working to identify any potential dealer or dealers. Our partners with the Drug Enforcement Administration and the Assistant United States Attorney's Office have also offered their support also in this investigation. Anyone found responsible for distributing the suspected fentanyl faces potential charges of murder or manufacture or delivery of a controlled substance causing death or serious bodily injury. Fentanyl overdoses have, affected, have had an effect on this community and is a major concern of the Austin Police Department. APD Narcotics Support Unit actively investigates fentanyl overdoses, overdose deaths, for the purpose of holding the dealers of this deadly drug accountable. To date, the Narcotics Support Unit has filed uh, five charges related to fentanyl overdose deaths. And now I'd like to turn it over to Austin Travis County Health Authority, Dr. Walk, uh, Walks. Good afternoon. We've lost um, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters um, due to the events of yesterday. And I come to you today to stress the most important thing that I can to anyone that's listening to us today. Anyone can be an, a victim of an overdose. Um, if you're using or fighting an addiction, you should never use by yourself. Have a family member or a friend with you who can administer naloxone and call 911 to save your life. It is imp also important that all of us know the signs of an overdose so that we can take action as soon as possible and call 911 immediately. So those signs are small pupils, slow breathing or not breathing at all, cool and pale skin, and not responding or very low response level to um, stimulus. Don't hesitate to act if you're not quite sure. Uh, giving naloxone will save a life. Austin Public Health has been receiving funding from Congressman Lloyd Doggett through the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SAMHSA, 
to combat this crisis. And as was said earlier, that has gone a long way to help us prepare for a day such as what we had yesterday. This funding of over $2 million has allowed us to allocate 30,000 doses of naloxone to various community members. And it is also supporting our uh, community's efforts to support peer recovery specialists and harm reduction teams um, in our partner organizations, Communities for Recovery, and Texas Harm Reduction Alliance, to name a few. This funding also supports addiction treatment and harm reduction training through the University of Texas at Austin School of Pharmacy, through teams that are training um, local providers in emergency rooms and in primary care offices on the things that they can do to prevent and treat addiction. Finally, we are providing overdose awareness campaigns throughout our community. I'm going to end this statement by repeating myself. Anyone, anyone can be a victim of an overdose. Never take drugs alone. If you think someone may be overdosing, call 911 and take steps. And if you're carrying naloxone, use it. You could save a life. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Keith Pinkard, Chief Medical Examiner for Travis County. Beginning at approximately 1 a.m. on Monday morning through about 4 a.m. this morning, so about a 27-hour period, we have been involved in the investigation of eight uh, sudden unexpected deaths that are suspicious for drug overdose deaths. Our investigation at the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office involves going to the scene of the event and investigating the scene, circumstances, and history surrounding that event to put it into context within the broader picture of our death investigation and autopsy. The eight cases that we are currently investigating uh, were located uh, downtown and in southeast and northern parts of Austin. Some of them were transient individuals, and the histories provided uh, raised suspicion that these cases uh, may in fact be to drug overdoses. Some of the decedents were actually with other individuals who were also using substances and those other individuals were taken to hospitals for treatment. The autopsies on all eight of those individuals uh, were conducted uh, either yesterday or today. In fact, some of them are going on right now. Uh, the autopsy does take some time to complete. However, we also have our own toxicology lab where the toxicology testing will be taking place, and we hope to get preliminary results on what may have been in their systems in the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's everyone who has statements, but if you all have questions. There are eight deaths that have occurred in that 27-hour period that I just referenced. Whether or not they are all, in fact, drug-related deaths, we'll have to wait until the toxicology testing and the completion of the autopsy reports. We are investigating those eight deaths as suspicious. So... You're waiting on the toxicology to be able to answer that question. Do y'all have any response on that? As of right now, we don't know the exact substance, um, but based on the symptoms that were being showed from the victims, we do believe it's some sort of opi opioid. Uh, in the deaths that we are investigating, um, some very just general information, uh, not all of the people are identified. Um, and in general, uh, the age ranges are from the mid-30s to the mid-50s. That's all I have.
I can speak to some of the demographics as far as the people that were experiencing an overdose. Fortunately, to date, no pediatric patients. However, the age ranges did vary from 20s to 50s uh, and across all uh, ethnic demographics as well. Uh, for people experiencing the overdoses, uh, there were patients that uh, were unhoused. There were patients that were housed. Uh, there were patients that were at their workplace. And there were patients that were out in public accessible spaces as well. Uh, it was not limited to one geographic location. We did notice that there were some spots that had a higher density of overdoses, but it was spread throughout the entire city. still too early to, to make that determination, um, but it's not common to see it in one location and then pop up in others, but right now we're not sure. Based on the trends of what's going on with the opioid, uh, opioid, I cannot say the word, sorry. Um, incidents that we're having, it's most likely going to be fentanyl. But until we get toxicology from the ME's office, we are not going to say, we can't say uh, for certain. They are persons of interest in it. Um, the detectives have to go through uh, mountains of evidence to be able to um, come up with the probable cause to potentially charge them further. We're not. We're unable to know that right now. So we've seen that indication that some of that is being investigated. I'm not sure currently. Uh, that would probably be for EMS on the frequency of the calls right now. Uh, when we started seeing uh, the increase in opiate calls, that was really between nine and ten a.m. yesterday. About 10 to 11 p.m. last night is when we started to see it decrease. Then it continued to decrease overnight, and then a slight bump this morning. Um, but it is a significantly lower number today than it was yesterday. Yes, there are free Narcan kits at um, dispensing um, machine, machine dispensers across the city. And people that have MAP cards can get free Narcan at HEB locations and at community care pharmacies. So out of the 51 overdoses that we respond to yesterday, only four did not survive. So as I said, in 2021, we began that program. We make it available. They're able to check it out at our, uh, our PCR property control offices. Uh, many of them do, and in this instance, we'll make reminders for all officers to start checking that out and carry it on them. We don't. The four deaths that I'm referring to are patients that we actually attempted to resuscitate and save, and were unable to. Uh, it is the four that are inside of the, the deaths that are being reported here. 
So it's not an addition, it's part of the, the larger number, but it is four that we were unable to uh, rebuy. So the state model would have been roughly I'm not sure if, if uh, the 51 are all reflected into that uh, because we don't compare uh, demographic data at this time, but that's something that we will have eventually. Right. So for the incident yesterday, um, the investigation of the narcotic support unit, uh, one charge was filed on one individual for felon in possession of a firearm. Now they're going to continue their investigation with potential charges, and those charges can range from anywhere from possession or delivery of controlled substance all the way up to murder or delivery of controlled substance causing serious bodily injury or death. There are two people detained at that time, so... Uh, we're not ruling out anybody um, during our investigation. If more come up, we're definitely going to be addressing that as well. Correct. Thank you all. If you all need anything else, you can follow up with Um We'll do that afterwards. Uh, but just let me know if you all Just one thing. Just want to give a, a thank you to the Texas Harm Reduction Alliance that couple of years ago, invited me, Commissioner Gomez, Dr. Walk, some others to a town hall where they demanded a response from the city and the county on this. And I think had they not done that, frankly, we wouldn't have been as prepared as uh, the EMS chief uh, told us, uh, and, and it would have been much worse. So I want to give a thank you to that group, uh, not only for that activism, but also for the work that they're doing to hand out Narcan and, and the other community groups that I mentioned earlier. But thank you all very much. Will Dupree back in the KXAN live studio as we wrap up this news conference from Austin and Travis County leaders. Uh, they're discussing uh, a pretty uh, upsetting update to what unfolded in the last 27 hours or so. Uh, they're now saying that at least 51 people have uh, experienced an overdose uh, due to a potentially fentanyl laced opioids. And of those 51 cases they responded to yesterday, four people have died. Now, the chief medical examiner for our area did say that they're investigating another four deaths that could be related to this, uh, but that's too early to say. So potentially there could be eight people who have died from uh, this batch of drugs that uh, has now resulted in a series of overdoses across our community. And you heard there uh, that they said that this happened all across the city, downtown, northern parts of Austin, southeast as well, in many different places, including camps, workplaces, and homes. So this uh, is going to lead to a police investigation. What the police shared a few moments ago is that two people have been detained during this investigation so far. Uh, however, only one has been charged with uh, being a felon in possession of a firearm. However, other charges could be forthcoming, so we'll have to wait and see and follow up with police and work to learn those details. So please stay with us as we continue reporting this. Uh, there are a number of ways to be able to get that opioid, uh, that opioid overdose uh, reversal uh, Narcan drug uh, across our community, and we have some of that information on our website at kxan.com. So we thank you again for watching here this afternoon. We appreciate that. I'm Will Dupree in the KXAN Live Studio. We'll see you back here at another time. Hope you all stay safe and healthy out there. Take care.